What's poppin'? Hey, welcome back. Here we talk about midlife mental health and BTS, mostly BTS, and how these things come together. So I, I, you guys, if you, you, if you've been here for a while, you know that, like many people film BTS, when my life was in crisis. The thing is, is my life, my immediate actual life is less in crisis than it was when I discovered them in 2020. That's great. But my life and marriage, as I've known it for 20 years, is falling apart in 2022. I have not posted as frequently as I want to. One of the things that I have not posted a ton about is Rise of Bongtan. I got started in that last year, loved it. I stopped at episode 15 back in like March. It was after I had fallen and I was starting to recover. Um, I'm so confused right now. I'm like looking for my coffee that's in my hand. Literally looking around the desk. Where'd my coffee go? Where'd my coffee go? Why is my hand hot? Because I'm holding my coffee. Now for those of you who are not on Twitter, the problem with not being on Twitter is you miss breaking news because there is constantly bangtan breaking news. Maybe I should have a segment called Bangtan Breaking News where I cover what Twitter's talking about today for those of you who <laughs> for those of you who aren't on Twitter. But then again, there's also a lot of drama on on Twitter. I'm not going to do a deep dive into the drama, but I am going to discuss a couple things real quick here. And then we're going to dive into Rise of Bangtan chapter 16. Another video I've avoided putting out is my thoughts and feelings on Festa dinner. But I've been avoiding it and I don't know why exactly. I should talk to my therapist about this. I've had a, a very huge set of feelings since Festa dinner. And I know a lot of ARMY's feelings seem to have suddenly just gotten better and they decided the whole thing can be hocked up to a mistranslation. But I think it was very clear and I have a lot of, a lot of feelings about Festa Dinner still. Those feelings became more complicated this week when it was announced that the HYBE and Disney Plus have a partnership where um, we are guaranteed three new pieces of content. If you have the Disney Plus subscription, there's the In the Soup Friendcation collaboration between Wooga Squad, Tay and his buddies. I hope I'm saying Wooga Squad right. <laughs> We've got Permission to Dance LA exclusively on Disney Plus and then we've got Not Beyond Not Beyond the Star. What is it? What does the B stand for? Something the Star. I don't I, I believe it's a docu-series is it? Covering the guy's career, their history with personal pieces of information from them and uh, direct interviews with the guys. That's great. All of that's great. You know we're going to be thrilled for content and especially if it's something that the guy's hands and fingerprints are on. We love that, right? That's, I mean, we love them. However, these men made it very clear they need a break. Again, if you're interested in my thoughts on Festa Dinner, let me know. And if you feel like I need to keep my damn thoughts to myself, let me know. Or then again, why are you on a commentary channel at all? I don't know. The guys need a break. And of course, there's this huge joke right now, BTS constantly redefining what break means because they're not on a break. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. And there's a lot of things they're breaking right now, including the constant breath down their neck and back for them to not breathe, but for them to crank out content that will make money for their company. Anyhow, I could I could do I could do a deep dive right now on this. I'm not going to. That's that's for the Festa Dinner video. All that to say, I'm nervous about a Disney partnership. How much pressure the guys are still under contract. They don't get to just say, no, I'm not doing something. So how much pressure are they under to create content that they need a break from? Will they have to create more? We love them. We don't want them to suffer. Anyway, do you know where I'm going with this? There was drama on Twitter yesterday because someone very dear to ARMY who is a true purple-blooded ARMY through and through and for anyone to doubt her is to cast doubt on their own loyalty to BTS and ARMY as far as I'm concerned. She was mistranslated, misinterpreted to have a problem with a partnership. I did not read that in her words, but I will openly say right now, I have a problem with the partnership because you cannot tell me anyone who doubts the loyalty of an ARMY to doubt the creator and heart and soul behind the rise of Bangtan. To doubt the loyalty of these people as true army is super confusing to me by people who are defending 
freaking Disney Plus. That's wild to me because as far as I'm concerned, we shouldn't even believe or trust Hybe. If the guys churn stuff out for another year or two against their own will and make a massive amount of money for Disney Plus and for Hybe, and then they reach a literal breaking point. No one at the top of Hybe, and I'm not, I'm not counting Bang in this, I'm not counting Big Hit, no one at the top of Hybe, no one, no one at Disney Plus cares. In fact, they may actually even make more money off of something like that happening. So, I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I'm gonna leave it at that because I did not cover the Disney Plus stuff in the, in the, in the Festa video because that literally is just from the last couple days. Now, regarding Rise of Bangtan, how does this docu-series fit in with an official docu-series or whatever this is that Disney Plus is creating? Well, what Disney Plus is creating has an agenda. And I heard drama that I'm not gonna go into in specifics about people believing that the rise of Bangtan has an agenda. Well, it's impossible. Let's take some journalism classes, folks. It's impossible to create something that's truly without an agenda. Um, just the mere words that we use and so forth. However, the difference is, is Disney is making something that's incredibly advertiser friendly that will bring them money. Further, they have to make something that's rather family friendly. Luckily, our guys are pretty wholesome, but they're also creating something to make money because they know that now I, who have always been against getting a Disney Plus subscription, I'm going to be getting one because I want to watch this content. So that is their one and only goal as to where something like what Dr. Oz, what the wonderful woman does who does um, the Planet Army podcast or that wonderful woman whose name I have no think is her, I believe her TikTok name. I love her and I, I'm bad with names, guys. I'm really bad with names, I'm so sorry. She's incredible. Let's not doubt these people. Let's not doubt. I have a spin on this channel. My spin is mental health and how healing I find these men. And of course, I'm gonna defend them to the end on that. The rise of Bangtan is not corporate done. It is done purely from the heart and soul of ARMY who knew and loved these men before they even debuted. It is the ultimate love letter of what these men have created as individual humans, as a team, and by building a fandom that wants to be inspired, be passionate, and make these men proud. This is a big deal. It would be ridiculous to think that there are cornerstones of content in the in the army experience and the rise of Bangtan is a cornerstone in this. It will forever have a cemented place in this. And one day, one day the men are going to look back on their lives and they're going to see a flood of content from people who made little compilation videos and the little shorts of my BTS story and reaction videos. There's so much that these men are gonna be able to look back at and see their life through the eyes of people who love them. I, in my heart, do not believe that anything that they're going to watch is going to mean more to them than the rise of Bangtan. I think seeing the rise of Bangtan and seeing reactors getting to know them through the rise of Bangtan, I think that is going to mean more to the men when they are 70 years old than what Disney chose to put out about them. All right, so now that I've explained how much this series means to me, and I will not go in depth on how much Anissa means to me, but just like I would fight, fight. I mean, physically, my weak ass, feeble old body would go to actual battle for any of the men of BTS, I would for Anissa also, because her heart is that pure, her mission is that pure, her dedication and passion are that real, not just for BTS, but for ARMY also. And that is something I will never be able to say about any of the executives at Disney. And for that matter, I'm not sure if I could say that about the executives at Hive. So it is a great weekend to dive back in. Again, I didn't post anything from Rise of Bangtan because this year has been with, with a looming separation, divorce, implosion of my life and marriage with a fall that actually broke like a quarter of my body 
I, I, I took a I took a hiatus. Then I, it's like, you know, I don't know if you know what this is like, but after you don't come back for a while, it feels weird. It feels weird, right? Like, oh, it's been a long time. We're gonna dive in and we're gonna do The Rise of Bangtan, chapter 16. I do wanna say, I have started over from the beginning. I rewatched them because I wanted to feel all of it again. I know some of you have watched it repeatedly and that is beautiful. And that's the thing is we're going to do that. So don't let anybody talk you out of loving and experiencing any part of the content that is doing justice to the men and what we love. We love these men. Anyway, did I tell you my name? Hi, I'm Ashley Sue. If you're new here, um, welcome to what happens here. <laughs>